Full color! Captain of the Pansy, the attack of the talking toilets. Ah! The second epic novel by Dave Pilkey, Caldecott Honor Artist. Full color! Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. The second epic novel by Dave Pilkey, with color by Jose Garibaldi, Scholastic King. This book has been approved by PET, people for the ethical treatment of toilets. To learn more, please visit planetpilkey.com. Chapters Forward The Top Secret Truths About Captain Underpants. 7. 1. George and Harold. 11. 2. This story. 15. 3. The flashback. 19. 4. The invention. 25. 5. Bigger and better things. 31. 6. The invention convention. 33. 7. Busted. 39. 8. The invention convention detention. 41. 9. Captain Underpants the attack of the talking toilets. 45. 10. A big mistake. 53. 11. The invention, convention, detention, suspension. 59. 12. Things get worse. 61. 13. It's too late. 67. 14. The talking toilet takeover. 71. 15. Cream chip beef to the rescue. 75. 16. The turbo toilet 2000. 83. 17. The incredibly graphic violence chapter part 1 in Flipperama. TM. 87. 18. Harold and the purple ball point Ben. 103. 19. The Incredible Robo Plunger. 107. 20. The Incredibly Graphic Vance Chapter Part 2 in Flippo Rama TM. 109. 21. The Aftermath. 123. 22. To make a long story short. 127. 23. After the Aftermath. 128. 24. Principles for today! Or The Invention, Convention, Detention, Suspension, Prevention. 129. Bones Comic. Dog man in the tongue of justice. One three eight for Vax. One five five. Um, hello. Before you read this book, there's some things you should know. So Harold and I have created this informative path with the fill in the details. Please don't let this comic fall into the wrong hands. The top secret truth about Captain Underpants by George Beard and Harold Hutchins. Who did I ever think? Once upon a time, there were two cool kids named George and Harold. We are cool. Me too. They made their own comics about a superhero named Captain Underpants. Everybody thought their comics were funny. <sighs> Except for the mean old principal, Mr. Crop. Blah, blah, blah. One time, Mr. Crop was being mean to George and Harold. Blah, blah, blah. So they bought the 3D Hypno Ring. They hypnotized Mr. Crop. I will obey. Then they turned him into Captain Underpants. But Mr. Crop thought he really was Captain Underpants. He jumped out the window to fight crime. Oh! No. George and Harold tried to stop him, but they have to save the world first. Kaboom! Bad guy. When they got back to school, George poured water on Captain Underpants' head. He turned back to Mr. Krupp, but something was wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Because now, for some strange reason, every time Mr. Krupp hears somebody snap their fingers, snap, he turns back into Captain Underpants! No. So whatever you do, please don't snap your fingers around Mr. Krupp. Please, please, please don't snap those fingers! This has been a public service announcement from George and Harold, who still deny everything. The end. Trios Comics Inc. Chapter 1. George and Harold. This is George Beard and Harold Hudgens. George is the kid on the left with a tie and a flat top. Harold is the one on the right with a t-shirt and a bad haircut. Remember that now. Depending on who you ask, you probably hear a lot of different things about George and Harold. Their teacher, Miss Ribble, might say that George and Harold were disruptive and behaviorally challenged. Their gym teacher, Mr. Meaner, might add that they were in serious need of a major attitude adjustment. Their principal, Mr. Krupp, would probably have a few more choice words to, to include, like sneaky and criminally mischievous and I'll get those boys if it's the last thing I- well, you get the idea. But if you ask their parents, they'd probably tell you that George and Harold were smart and t sweet and very good-hearted. Even if they were a bit silly at times, I'd have to agree with their parents. But even so, their silliness did get them into a lot of trouble sometimes. In fact, it once got them into so much trouble, they accidentally almost destroyed the whole planet within an army of evil vicious talking toilets! But before I tell you that story, I have to tell you this story. Chapter 2, This Story 
One fine morning at Jerome Horowitz Elementary School, George and Harold had just gone out of their fourth grade Rimadial gym class when they saw a big sign in the hallway. It was an announcement for the second annual invention convention. George and Harold had fond memories of last year's invention convention, but this year's convention was a bit different. The, pr the first prize winner got to be principal for the day. Wow, said George. Whoever gets to be principal gets to make up all the rules for the whole day, and everybody in school has to follow those rules. We have got to win first prize this year, exclaimed Harold. Just then, George and Harold's principal, Mr. Krupp, showed up. Aha, he shouted. I bet you two are up to no good. Not really, said George. We're just reading about this year's contest. Yeah, said Harold. We're going to win first prize in the contest and be principals for the day. Ha 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 ha, laughed Mr. Krupp. Do you honestly think I'd let you two enter the year's contest after that stunt you pulled at last year's invention convention? George and Harold smiled and sought back to the first annual invention convention. Chapter 3, The Flashback it was about one year earlier, and all of the faculty and students of Jerome Howard's elementary school had gathered in the gymnasium for what would later be known as the sticky chair incident. George and Harold stepped up to the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, said George, Harold and I have invented something that is guaranteed to keep you all glued to your seats. Yes, said Harold. We call it glue. Mr. Krupp became very angry. You two did not invent glue! He shouted. He stood up to take the microphone away from Harold, and his chair stood up with him. Everyone in the gymnasium laughed. The school secretary, Miss Ansrope, stood up to help remove Mr. Krupp's chair from his pants. Her chair stood up with her, too. Everyone in the gymnasium laughed harder. The other teachers stood up, and you guessed it, they were stuck to their chairs as well. Everyone in the audience howled with laughter. One kid stood up to go to go to the bathroom, and his chair came up with him also. The audience stopped laughing so hard. They so all quickly checked their chairs, and suddenly the laughter stopped completely. Everyone in the whole school was glued to their seats. You see, while it was true that George and Harold had not invented glue, they had invented a new kind of glue. By simply mixing Rubber, mixing some rubber cement with concentrated orange juice mix, they had created a quick drying body heat activated glue. Then they, they, then they applied this special glue to every scene of the gymnasium except theirs early that morning. Everybody in the gymnasium was glaring at George and Harold and seizing with anger. I've got a good idea, said George. What? asked Harold. Run! cried George. George and Harold were grinning from ear to ear, remembering their silly invention and the chaos that followed. That was hilarious, laughed Harold. Yeah, chuckled George. It'll be hard to top that this year. Well, you won't get a chance this year, said Mr. Krupp. He took out a magnifying glass and held, up, held it up to the fine print on the sign. This contest is open to all students in the third and fourth grades except George Beard and Harold Hutchins. You mean we can't enter the contest? asked Harold. It's worse than that, cried, laughed Mr. Krupp. You boys can't even attend this year's convention. I'm putting you two into, I'm putting you two in study hall that whole day. Mr. Krupp turned and walked away, laughing victoriously. Brats, said Harold. What are we going to do now? Well, said George, you know the old saying. If you can't join them, beat them. <laughs>